Remember COVID-19 medical tyranny? Well, it's far from over in the province of British Columbia. BC's public health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, is still clenching on to discriminatory vaccine mandates that prevent healthy, capable and willing healthcare workers, thousands of them, from getting back to saving lives. And today I catch up with MLA for the Conservative Party of BC, Bruce Bannman, who shook the house on November 8th after saying this. My question to this NDP Premier, will he fire Dr. Bonnie Henry and hire back the thousands of healthcare workers who were wrongly kicked to the curb? Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, standing in front of the BC Legislator with Bruce Bannman, the Abbotsford South MLA, as well as the Conservative Party of BC MLA. Thanks for being on Rebel News. You know, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I know a lot of people who follow Rebel News agree with a petition that your party just put out, and it's calling to have BC's public health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, fired. Tell us why you guys brought on that petition. Why now? Well, first off, it was grassroots demand was number one. And number two is if you take a look at all of those, at the healthcare crisis that we have in British Columbia, um, and you take a look at the fact that we have educated professionals sitting on the sidelines waiting to go back to work. As a matter of fact, they're demanding to go back to work. They want to help. They see the systems in absolute peril. And then you further go on to that we are one of a couple of jurisdictions in the world that will not hire back unvaccinated healthcare workers. And there are rapid tests which can be used to see if someone's infectious. It makes zero sense. Zero sense. And we are actually putting people's health at risk. Like we are at a pan an epidemic uh, of a lack of ability to deal with those that are sick. Come on, we're, we're sending people to the United States for cancer care. We've got ERs that are closing down randomly. It makes absolutely no sense. She's the top dog. I believe both her and Adrian Dix. I think Adrian should resign. That's not going to happen. The, the premier has dug his heels in. It, it comes down to mismanagement of personnel and mismanagement of healthcare healthcare staff that could be out there working on the front lines, that should be working on the front lines. They want to work on the front lines. Why are we one of two jurisdictions in Canada that refuse to use common sense? Well, you're preaching to the choir for many Rebel News viewers and subscribers, but let's take a look at the reaction you got in the house when you brought it up. During the COVID-19 crisis, Everyday hardworking people were sucked into a whirlpool of chaos caused by constantly changing rules, brutal restrictions on people's personal freedoms, and a heavy-handed approach that especially failed the most vulnerable British Columbians. Today, Mr. Speaker, British Columbia stands alone against all evidence as one of the only jurisdictions in the world to ban healthcare workers who choose not to take the jab because of ideological agenda of this extreme leftist NDP government and their unelected bureaucrats. In the midst, in the midst of a healthcare staffing crisis, Dr. Bonnie Henry and this NDP government have banned thousands of healthcare workers from working in BC's hospitals, clinics, doctor's offices, and Question. ERs. This NDP government is failing working class, everyday British Columbians, Question, member. and so is Dr. Henry. Question, question. Enough's enough, enough's enough. Question, member. Shh. Mr. Speaker. Members, 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 hold it. Member, question please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question to this NDP Premier, Will he fire Dr. Bonnie Henry and hire back the thousands of healthcare workers who were wrongly kicked to the curb? You said a lot of things that, as Rebel News, we cover the other side of the story, especially people with the jab or still not back at work. Yep. Why now? You mean why? Why bring it up now? Because I finally have a voice to be able to do it. Because when I was poor, when I was a member of the other party that shall be nameless, um, I was stifled to be honest. Um, and John has allowed me and anyone who's going to come and join a much broader ability to speak on behalf of our constituents. As a matter of fact, John's policy has been 
Your constituents come first, the party comes second. And I think that is such a breath of fresh air. Now, one of Health Minister Adrian Dix's response was to basically accuse you of having contempt against people that are, you know, in long-term care homes. People most vulnerable to COVID-19 were the very people that the member talks about. How can you have so much contempt for people who live in long-term care? How can you have so much contempt for people who live in acute care? Like, honorable speaker, who, ha who have to be in acute care. How can you have, Honorable Speaker, when we know that it's the most vulnerable, who are most vulnerable to COVID-19, how can you take the view that we should have abandoned them? We had the best record, I think, in Canada in response. And we had the best record in Canada in response because Dr. Henry listened to people, she engaged with people, and she applied the best possible science to decisions including, Honourable Speaker, the one the member is referring to. She is a great public health leader. I am proud to be associated with her, and I think it is shameful that she's been targeted in this way by a political party in this legislature. She has done a great, courageous, and remarkable job. I stand with her, and I hope everyone in this House does. What do you make of that accusation? I think that he's got it totally backwards. Um, contempt is actually, you know, here's the thing. I got a friend of mine who's, whose wife is, has dementia and is in long-term care. Every 48 hours, he does a rapid test, as he should. But staff don't do have to do a test every 48 hours. If, if what's contemptible is not making the, the playing field level for anyone, everyone. Why is it that staff are not being asked to test to make sure that they're safe. Because we know in the breakout, it was staff that actually were the number one vector or the transmittable spread of, of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So quite frankly, um, all that is is politics and it is not based on evidence. You know, I, I got, I'm a medical professional. I kind of know some of this stuff and I respectfully disagree with him in a huge way. Um, it is not based on good science. It's not based on good evidence. Look, the only tool we have, because we all know that we, if you went and got vaccinated, you could still be infectious, asymptomatic. We love to use big words, A for absent of symptoms. Mm -hmm. So you could be fully vaccinated and still contagious to others. That's why they make guests come in who are vaccinated do the test anyway. So why are we not doing that for staff? If we truly want to protect them, uh, I'll let Adrian explain that one because it doesn't make any sense to this cowboy. I vividly remember the briefing call I attended where Dr. Bonnie Henry used the term cajole to describe the vaccination update plan that she and the BCNDP had cooked up together. The Cambridge Dictionary defines the word cajole as, and I quote, cajole to persuade someone to do something they might not want to do by pleasant talk and sometimes false promises, unquote. Mr. Speaker, let me say this, as a medical professional who is personally twice vaccinated, this is not about opposing the jab. It is about ending the medical tyranny of this NDP government and Dr. Bonnie Henry. Enough cajoling enough coercing and enough deflecting. It's time to be held accountable. My question to the NDP Premier, Mr. Speaker, will you fire Dr. Bonnie Henry or do you want to wait for the working class, everyday British Columbians to elect a conservative government and fire you both? If you agree with the Conservative Party of BC that Dr. Bonnie Henry has to go, I've gone ahead and linked the petition that you can sign in the description box below. If you also appreciate the reports that Rebel News brings you and that I came all the way from the Lower Mainland, caught a very expensive ferry to bring you these reports, please go to rebelfieldreports.com and donate what you can to help us recoup those expenses. We appreciate your support.